God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to my studio. You're watching Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klish and I'm going to take you on a journey today. But first of all, I want to talk to you about where we went on our last show. We had traveled to Rome and the picture that I'm holding is of a monastery on um, uh, one of the hills of Rome, one of the seven hills of Rome. And this was a lovely monastery on a, oh, a very, the sun was going down and it was a very beautiful place, very quiet, very peaceful. As you can imagine, Rome is a very busy place, but this was one, one place where I could, could uh, meditate a little and I loved it. So then at the end of the last show, this is where we were. We had uh, completed our painting to this point and you can see there's still quite a bit left to do on it. It's pretty much of a rough lay-in, but it does give us a really good idea of where we're going with the painting. Okay, now I'd like to show you the finished painting, and that is right here, okay? Um, this is the finished painting, and it, as you can see, I have defined the building a little more, and I have added some, some branches on the trees. I have defined the trees over here on um, the uh, left side of the painting a little more. I've added a little more light in the background and defined these trees, brought them up a little bit, and brought these trees in, and I have the sun glowing in between behind these trees, then they're casting their shadows, and then this is very lit up in the front. And as I was looking at it, I remembered that there was this beautiful sun um, as it was going down, there was this beautiful sunlight hitting the corner of the building. And so I've added that as a, as a little extra touch. And then this right down here, this dark area here, was where the ground just dropped off. And, it, and I don't know what was down there at some time or another. Um, it may have been caves. It might have been whatever. You know, it's such an ancient place. But anyway, so this is... This is Hillside Monastery in Rome, and I, I hope you like it. I hope you like it as much as I like painting it for you. And now today, we're going to travel a little bit north of Rome. We're going to Tuscany, an area of, that is very popular in Italy, and uh, we're going to San uh, Gigmignano, I have a little trouble saying that, to a working farm that has been in the same family f since the 1800s. And so generation after generation uh, has uh, been working this farm. It's huge. Um, they grow all of their own food um, and they sell. They sell food. They mill their own wheat. They make their own wine. They're a winery. They grow their own cattle. It's just, it, it's just absolutely um, fascinating how large this is and how many generations of family that I met at one time while I was there visiting the farm. We had a wonderful lunch and then afterwards we had wine tasting. But I'll tell you more about that later. Let's get into the painting. Okay, as you can see, I have it pretty much drawn on and this is what we're going to be painting, okay? This was the front door, and there was this quaint wagon that had been made out of like brambles or branches that had been bent, and this big wine cask, and, and that says Fattorio San Donata San Gimignano. 
Okay, excuse the accent, I'm not very good. So anyway, I have, like I said, I have put it on in charcoal and, uh, and I have secured it with a real watered down acrylic. Now I'm, I don't want to paint it with the charcoal on. So now I'm going to wipe off any excess charcoal because that will discolor my paint when I start painting. Okay, now the, the picture isn't quite as, the drawing isn't quite as clear now, but there's still enough left there for me to work with. And there we go. Okay, so now I'll take my palette and I'm going to, it's just my usual regular palette, I'm going to mix up some I'm going to start with the sky, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm just going to mix up a nice, warm, Tuscan sky. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of the blue here and make a nice cobalt blue. The sky in Italy was so blue. It was breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. And just, oh, my goodness. So, but I, I, I need to gray it a little bit, so I will gray it with a little bit of its complement, the red, because we don't want to make it too terribly bright or it will be garish there. Okay, now for today, I think since we have so far to cover, I think we'll just kind of do more of a lay-in and... And just so that you can see where I'm going with the colors and, and everything, um, I want, because I do, I only have an hour, and I really would like to have this canvas covered for you so that you can see, have a good idea of what this is going to be like. I love this color of blue almost the color I'm wearing today. It's not really a cerulean blue, and it's not really a French marine, ultramarine. It's, it's closer to a cobalt, and I like that. And I get that by mixing the two together, the ultramarine and the, and the cerulean together, and I get that nice cobalt blue. Okay, I think that looks okay. I think I put just a little bit too much thinner on there, but that's all right. That'll set up, and we can always come back to that. Alrighty. Now we've got um, pretty much of a violet, a lot of violet in here, grade violet in the building, and so we'll go there next. And so I'm going to just add a little, little bit of violet to my blue. Now I need a little more paint this time because we have a bigger area to cover. And as I was saying, I just, I really want to give you an idea. Now I have to, um, yellow is the complement of violet, but I'm going to use my yellow ochre because I don't want it to be bright. can't be bright. It's got to be a nice grade tone. When something is, how many years old would that be? 1800, 1900, 2000. When something's, you know, like about 250, close to 300 years old, why? It doesn't look new. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. I'll add, lighten it up a little bit with some white. By adding the white to the color, I can always tell, then I can tell if I have a, a good color. Well, needs a little more blue. Some one of these days I'm going to surprise you and have all the colors mixed up so that you won't have to wait for me while I do that. All right, this looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. Now I'm not going to thin it quite so much this time. Just a little tiny bit. Using an odorless, thinner, 
uh, odorless, odorless turpin uh, tying to because it it, it uh, is so um, noxious the odor and I can't really stand that so now I'm painting today like I would if I were painting this outdoors from life. I would actually just kind of come in and I call it scumbling because I want to get the different colors in the different places that they are. So I would be scumbling it in like this. Quick, thinner paint, quick application, not worrying anything at all about details, considering shape more, shape and and uh, and color, temperature, um, and value. That would be very important. Now that I do see a little orange up in there, so I might take a little orange here and mix in here and just. Go ahead and mix a little orange in here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now back to the blue. And we do have these beautiful uh, areas where the, the brick, it looks to me like what they have done over the years is put some kind of a plaster over the original brick foundation. So we have this, this look, of, oh no, I guess it's not brick, it's stone. It's stone, and then there's brick. So there's a little bit of that showing through. And then this over here is lighter. That's more the stone color. So we're going to go a little bit lighter in there. And as I said, I'm not going for detail at all. Right now, I'm just, I just want to get the, it's a little too yellow, let's get a little orange in there. There we go. I mean, we'll, we'll put the rocks and all that good stuff, the neat stuff on afterwards. We'll suggest those. For right now, we just want to get it paint on it. Now, we do have a tree that's going to be coming over this area, but we have to do what's behind the tree before we can do the tree. All right. A little bit there, a little bit there. A little light there, okay. I do see a darker, a darker line coming across right here. And this is a little more blue in it. Okay. Now this is all pretty much a dark green behind, but I'm gonna I'm going, you know, the the windows are like the eyes. I always think that the windows on a building are like a person's eyes. The windows are the soul of the building, like a person's eyes show the soul of the person. So I always like to go there and do the windows first. And I think I'm just trying to mix up something that is going to look like it has a little bit of a reflective quality because as you can see in this window right here, we're seeing a lot of, I believe they have the blind down. So we're seeing a lot of the sky um, being put in there uh, and reflected into in the window. So we want to make that kind of, uh, get that a little bit bluer there, a little lighter. And there's that beautiful red around there, around the um, different brush. 
There we go. Okay. Too bright. Now, if I had put the red on first, the red would bleed into the blue. So that's why I put the blue on first. Over here, this window is um, has a darker, grayer uh, cast to it right here. When we arrived at this place, it was earlier in the day, almost lunchtime, and they took us to this building where they had all these tables set up, big long tables, and it was a feast for the eyes because from one end to another was all this wonderful, marvelous, different types of cheeses and breads and um, just everything that you could think of that you would want to taste in fruit, grapes and apples and oh, I mean, it was just, it was just really inspiring. And then there were all these carafes of wine, all different kinds of wine. And the owners came and welcomed us and told us, manja, eat, eat, you know, and did we ever. We ate like crazy, like we hadn't eaten in weeks and drank all the wine and when as soon as the wine carafe was empty, here he would come with another one. As soon as a plate of cheese was gone, here he would come with another one. Such hospitality, it was, it was just absolutely phenomenal, the hospitality. I mean, it, 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 I can't remember ever being made to feel more welcome. Anyway, so then afterwards, we took a tour. We needed to walk around. <laughs> we were pretty full. So we took a tour, and they showed us all these old, old buildings and, and um, places that uh, the buildings each have purpose, a purpose to them, you know. Um, they, they um, one would be the pig farm, the pig barn and the chickens and the, the goats and, you know, I, I, it was just amazing to me to think that a family, all the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and right on down the line since 1800 have made their living working this farm and is still going strong today. It's just amazing to me. Yeah, okay. And we do have, oh, that window looks crooked. That's cockeyed, Kitty. <laughs> Don't you love it? You step back a little bit and you look and you say, oh dear, let me see here. Okay, now, there is a little bit of a of a darker edge in these windows right here because we are looking we are looking from a, an angle and that's a little bit too much but I've got a big brush and I'm not going to worry about it I just want to give the idea of what's going on there Okay. After we left this place, we drove through the Tuscan countryside over to a town by the name of Siena. And in each place that we went, we had a different guide. The guides have a union in Italy. So as you travel around the country, each, uh, our, our main guide 
was not allowed to act as our guide in the other cities because she didn't have a contract. So they're very well regulated there so that everybody can make some money, I guess. Anyway, she, um, the guide that we did have, guide that we did have in Siena was a man, and he was, ooh my, very macho, and he was telling us that once a year in the plaza, they have this plaza, most of the towns over there have a plaza, and the shops and everything are built around it, and the, and the town square, or whatever you want to call it, and then in the middle is the, um, um, is a place where people sit and shop and visit and talk and all of that sort of stuff. So it's, it's quite interesting. But so he uh, was telling us about how once a year they have this fantastic horse race and they put sand down all in front of all the shops and the plaza is built in a way, is scooped out like a dish, uh, uh, like, a, like a shallow bowl, so that no, no matter where you're standing, you can see the horse race, because they, they bet on it, of course. And it's a very dangerous thing, because there's only about 14 feet from the front of the shop to the end of the walkway, and then the, um, the plaza starts, you know, the, the, um, this indentation in the ground where everybody stands, it's the, the town square. And it's, it's like um, they put all this sand down, and the horses race around in a circle, around and around. And there's eight different families or factions in the town, and they each have their own district, and they each have their own um, flag. And so when you are in somebody else's area, the last thing in the world you want to do, you know, is be caught after dark in somebody else's area. And whoever wins the race, then they, then there's a big, like a, the, the, the winner's flag, he gets to that group, ethnic group or group of people that live in the town, in their region of the town, they get to display the, the flag and, and boast and be a big deal for the rest of the, for the, rest of the year until the next year when, it, when they do the same thing again. And it's so dangerous for the horses because there's hardly any room at all. I don't know. I don't know if I could watch that. But no matter, the, the square itself is built so that no matter where you are standing, you can see. You can see this. We'll put this little bit of roof on there so that we can see what's happening here. And that will be end up being the shadow. So everyone has a great view of this race and they bet on it and it's a holiday. And then and tiny narrow streets. My gosh, so so narrow the streets, some of them are so narrow that Three people cannot walk down it. It's more like little tiny alleys. Okay, let's put a little mark right here to accent this, accentuate this a little bit. And I'm just going to suggest a little bit of the brickwork here so that you kind of get an idea. There we go. Okay. All right, now then, back over here, we've got this green tree. So I will change brushes again. And I'm just going to very, very lightly um, suggest some of the tree.
when you're traveling abroad, it's, it's a wonderful adventure, but it's, it's a little um, intimidating too because, you, you know, I, I wondered before I left, should I learn how to speak Italian? And all the people that I knew that had already been to Italy told me, no, don't bother. Everybody speaks English over there. Well, that's not true, let me tell you. Not true. They don't all speak English. <laughs> and so there, in some places there were, was a lot of sign language going on, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Making sure that you get, can, they understand you and can get your point across. Now that's got a little dark, Kitty. I'm going to have to paint back into that. I can tell that, but I just want this. I want to get something in here on the side, something that's not blue or violet. Show a little contrast here, and I'm just going to play with that just a little bit up here. It's very hard for the viewer, especially if you are a non-artist, to understand this, because it just looks like I'm making scratches and anybody could do it. But I have to tell you, they're educated scratches. <laughs> So that gives us a little color. Now when I come back in here, I'll of course be giving this some brights and some lights and all that stuff. Now we have all this green over here, this behind. Um, but let's do the door first. I'm hoping today that we'll be able to get far enough along that I can show you a little bit about the finishing. That's a beautiful old oak door. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So I'm mixing my own oak color by mixing a little bit of the green with the red, which gives me a really nice, nice, warm kind of a brownish color. And I'm not going to worry about the the slats um, right now um, in the door, I mean the, the boards that make up the door. I'm not going to worry about that. I just want to get, get it masked in so that we can see what it looks like there. Now we do have some areas on the door that are a little darker. So I'll take a little alizarin crimson and mix with my green, and that's going to give me a nice mahogany color. The cad red light and green give you a nice burnt sienna or a warm brown, and the alizarin crimson and green gives you a nice mahogany color of some deeper, richer color, and that's going to come around here. And there we go. So now we have a little bit of a shadow on there. Okay. And then I notice that the door is a little dark at the bottom too. Um, right down in here. And I think of all the places that I went to, or I visited when I was in Italy, that visiting this farm um, had a very large impact on me. Um, it was it was just so quaint. I could have set up my paints and painted there for you know, probably months and, and been quite content. I mean, it was just such a, a lovely old place. And I wish that I could bring 
show you all the pictures that I took. You know, I when I'm getting ready to do the show, I I pull the pictures out and try to decide, well, what's doable, what's going to be interesting, you know, to the to you, the viewer, you know, and uh, there, that's a pretty good looking door. Anyway, I just, there's so many things that I wish that I could show you, but we don't have time. Okay, that's kind of orangey, and yet it's kind of got a little blue in it, too. And I'm not going to worry about making the, the brick look just yet, because that's, that's all pretty much finished. I just, I just want this on here so that you can see um, what it is going to look like in this area here. That's a little darker coming around there. And then it goes back to the light, and it's quite light on this side. Mm -hmm. And down there. Okay, and it comes out here a little bit. And this comes in here a little bit. All right, now then, this guy up here, we have to change our brush again and go back to a dark brush. There we go. This guy up in here is quite, quite dark. It's in shadow. I want to gray it, though. I don't want it, I want to warm it up a little bit. I don't want it to be too stark. There we go. That's nice. That, there, that's nice. Just, just, just enough so that the viewer feels that we have something going on up here that is very dark and in shadow, but not enough that it looks strange and garish. Okay, so that's that's what's coming across the front here, and then underneath there. It's going to be a little bit um, darker. The stone underneath here is going to be a little bit darker. And it's going to be a little bit darker right over in here. And right back in here. Okay. Now, I don't know if I talked to you about the wine in Italy. It's amazing. They don't put, there's something that we put in our wine over here that causes you to have headaches when you drink it. Not so in Italy. It's some kind of a preservative we put in our wines. They don't put it in over there. And consequently, the children uh, can drink the wine instead of milk. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting how that is. And when you drink the wine, you don't feel like, you're, um, like you've had too much or you've, you've uh, overdone it or you, you know, your stomach is upset or whatever. It's just nice. You just, it's just pleasant. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back to that green brush. And, well, I better, let me see here. No, I, yeah, I'm, this is pretty solid in there. I'll just put a nice dark green in there. Once again, I'm darkening my um, green with a little bit of the red. Now I'm going to go in underneath and I think I'm going to take a cool, you know you have a warm green and you have a cool green. Your warm green is sap green, your cool green is viridian. I'm going to take that cool green and I'm going to go in there. And because I want to, I, I want to make this kind of pop and then I'll come back and, and find my leaf patterns afterwards. Right now it's just all about defining the shapes 
the shapes of what is what is happening up here. This is rather an ambitious painting today. I must have woke up feeling very rested to think that I could tackle this in an hour. Okay, let's see here. So we have a little bit of this coming down here. And then we have a lot of this green up in here. And it's almost covering this little window. There we go. Coming around in here and it comes down a little bit, but that's there again. I keep wanting to go to the detail. The detail is fun. It's fun to put in the detail, but you know, it's like building a house. If you don't put the foundation under the house, then the, uh, the house won't stand. So we have to put, this is our foundation. We've got to get that before we go into the detail. And then this is coming around here like so. And there. And this is coming down here underneath a little bit. Hmm. It goes up and around this window. I didn't, I forgot to do that window. Let me get that other brush. Okay, that window is a little bit darker, so we'll make it. Get that in there. Ooh, I like that. That'll give it some life. Of course, that alizarin crimson is my favorite color. There we go. And later on, when I come back and I do the details on that window, I'm making it a little darker there because it is, it is a little darker on the side. But by adding that little bit of red in there, I'm really making it look like you can look in that window. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the green brush and finish up with that, putting my green around. So it's up and around in here. And it's coming down in here, behind the barrel, over here. This is coming along in here. Okay. And then this is coming around like this. In front of the window. All right, now. In the foreground here, let me get some of that on there. Well, I guess I'll get that barrel first. It's big, not barrel, I think that's called a wine ton. Looks like a ton of wine. Let's get that guy on there. And you can tell he's really, really old. And once again, I'm going to make up that nice rich brown color. But I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it to, to see how gray this is right in here. Yeah, I want to make that a little more gray. Not gray enough. There. Now when I put some highlights on that, and I'm trying to paint, so I'm going with the movement of the object. Back here, it has a little bit more of the red in it. Now 
And of course, there's all those staves that are going to be going horizontal that we'll have to do, but we won't worry about those now because there again, that's finished work. I do want to lighten that up just a little bit so that it looks a little rounder. I have to be careful, get too much paint here. There we go. There. Move a little more here. A little more in here. There we go. Now, as we go down and around, it's going to get a little darker. And I'm going to have to go behind here, behind my little willow wagon, willow branch wagon, and put the dark in there for that wine tub. And then I'll just have to draw over that because it, we need that dark underneath there because that part is in shadow. You know, you're constantly thinking about light and dark and shape. There we go. All right, now then, we will to the front of it. Doesn't that look marvelously worn? I love the way that looks. I don't want to get it too too dark now. I want to try to make it as true as I can. I wonder, can you hear that? Can you hear that scratch, scratching sound? It's not annoying to you. I do an awful lot of painting like this, just kind of scratching it in. I don't know. I don't know if that's appropriate, proper. I don't know if that's what if, if some famous art teacher would approve of my methods, but they work for me. They make me happy. And that's why I do this, because it makes me happy. And I love it. And I love being here with you and letting you join me in this journey across this campus, as well as across the ocean. There we go. I like that. I think we need to get a little bit of the ground color on. Um, I'll go back to that kind of, it seems to me like it's a real light kind of a grayish and um, let me see here starting from like right about in here and going over there okay now we do have some more green that's going to have to go on there That's a little darker underneath there. Oh, that looks good. Okay, that works. Works for me. Yeah. Nice little shadow coming out there. gone beyond my picture and that's because I didn't want the painting to end right with half of the barrel on there so I'm going to have to make up what is behind there my guess is is that it's probably it has a little bit of a shadow to it and then there's that tree that's there so all of this is probably a little bit of shadow. And because the, the, um, this little cart is made out of a material that you can see through, I actually have to put kind of a light um, surface 
behind there so that I can pull out the cart later. Um, if I don't paint what is behind the cart before I paint the cart, then all those little holes will, those little areas will show. So I'll come back and redefine the cart later. Okay, and then this would be some nice light here in the foreground. to the green brush. Hmm. I guess it must have gotten dipped into something else. Well, I'll just wipe this one off and use it. Alrighty. Now we're going to come back behind in here and create a little more green, a little more drama. And we're going to have some green coming back behind here. And there, I see a little bit of the building back there. And so when I, when I um, do the, the finish work on this, I will be putting that in. And, um, and then this is, uh, this is dark back here and in here too, because it's quite shadowy back there. Um, there we go. Okay. Now then, we have... Um, little wooden barrels. I believe those are called whiskey barrels. Right in here is one. And, and that has the greenery growing out of it. So we'll put just a little bit of a darker green growing out of that, so we can actually see that stuff is coming out of there. Okay, there we go, that works. Okay, and then over here it's the same thing. We have another little barrel, whiskey barrel, and the detail of the staves and all of that we'll put in on finish. In fact, I'm quite excited for you to watch the next show because then you'll get to see all of the changes of bringing this to life. That's always really exciting for me. And we'll have this coming out of here. A little bit of shadow in here behind. There we go. Okay, this right here is a little um, almost looks like it's from Spain, this little jug right here, kind of a orange and pottery, uh, Mexican pottery it looks like it's made out of, that red clay that uh, we see so many flower pots made out of. This looks like something that would have held a hen and chicks at one time or another. If you know what those are, they're a little funny little plant that keeps multiplying and you put it in a, um, something like this and it just, it just seems to just keep multiplying and poking out all the holes. And I don't see anything in there, but I don't like that. I don't like the fact that there's nothing in there. I am going to paint this barrel over here because I promised you I'd get this canvas covered. You know, and this is a, that was, those were half barrels down here. So now this is a whole barrel. This one here, and he's coming like this. And then he has a flower pot um, sitting on top.
And he's darker brown. He's much darker. What am I thinking here? I'm not looking. I'm not looking. There we go. Yeah, he's dark. he's much darker. And he's shaped like this. And then there's a flower pot on top of him. And the flower. Oh, I think I want to see some red. Just for the fun of it. Let's put some red flowers up here. You know, it's our painting. We can do whatever we want. And if we want to make red instead of purple, we can. Yeah. There we go. And then we'll come in with the dark green behind. Clean that up a little bit. And shape it. That's called coming in from the negative space. There we go. And here is the top of the barrel and that little pot is sitting on it. And just, just because I want to, we'll put a little highlight on it, on the pot. There we go. Now you can see that little pot sitting there. And let me see here. Oh, this is actually right here. There's a, there's a, um, like a old piece of wood that goes across the front and there's a bell hanging on it. And the only thing I can think of is that when the oxen pulled this cart, the bells would jangle. And I would imagine that was probably so that as people heard them coming, they knew the man that was selling the goods was coming because they could hear his, his jingling bell. That's my guess anyway. Sounds good, huh? All right, so... We'll just go ahead because it's kind of like, you know, sticking out there. So we'll just make it a make a little something there so that you don't. There we go. And then this is coming down here a little bit more. And there we go. All right. Now this is all going to have to sit up more before I start putting in the um, the. Uh, Wagon, that's going to have to sit up quite a bit. Give this a little shape. And give this a little shape over here. <laughs> this looks like it's floating, doesn't it? Oh, well, you'll see it next show. You'll see how it's supposed to look next show. Because we're almost out of time now, and there's not too much left that I can do. So I did get, it, I did get the canvas covered, though. I'm happy about that. Let's see here. We can take a little bit of dark. We've got just a couple minutes here. We can take just a little bit of this dark and kind of outline some of these places here where the where the uh, it's kind of like worn away and it shows the rock I wonder how old that is well I guess it's from the 1800s I would think maybe we'll just show just a few rocks in here and soften that line to to kind of make that look more, a little more shadow-like. Yeah, that looks all right. Yeah. It's not too bad for a rough-in. If I was painting on location, this is what I would leave with, is something that looked very much like this. And I'd have a good idea of where everything is and the colors and values that it was. And then I would go from there. And some of it I might make up. And some of it I might make look like what I actually see. That's the artist's prerogative. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> there we go. Little bits of the building behind. I hope you can see that. 
I just thought maybe that that would be a good idea to show a little bit of that building through there. And we'll play a little here, a little bit here, and soften those edges. There we go. Make some, a little more of the shadow over in here. And then, like I said, now we are going to have that, that little um, um, carry, uh, uh, wagon that's made out of uh, little branches that are all twisted around. I know there must be a name for that, but I don't, I'm not sure what it is. All right. You know, it's really a joy to be able to be here with you and have you have you join me as I reminisce and and explain my my process to you. I truly feel blessed to have had this time with you. Little touches here and there. And I think we accomplished what we set out to do. We have it all, the paint everywhere. We have it all covered with paint. A little more cast shadow in that area. Maybe a little more here. And yeah, there we go. There we go. And I got I have to take one more bravura stroke. And that will be right here in the foreground to bring it to life. And I said one stroke, but I cheat, and I say two. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure to be with you and have you join me on this journey. And be sure and catch the next show because on the next show, we'll be able to show you the completed painting of the working farm in the Tuscan region of Italy. And thank you so much for being with me today. Until then, bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.